Yeah, we're going to walk through the assembler and compiler. So I made a uh, little tiny compiler for uh, teaching purposes so that you can see how the big one works. Um, basically what this does is if you enter 1 plus 2 plus 3 times 2, it converts it to 64-bit assembly using a uh, stack machine. So uh, we, uh, we push push one, push two, push three, pop two and three, we pop two and three, add them, push the result, then we uh, we pop, we push two, then we have two, then, then we uh, pop the result from two plus three and uh, multiply, push the result, then we pop and finally add the one, we pop that, the one, and add that. So, uh, Let's look at how this works. Uh, compilers have, uh, normally you solve the problem of a compiler by using a lexical analyzer to uh, tokenize it. Um, this means we convert it to either, we, we take care of the uh, decimal to binary conversion or whatever you want to call it. <coughs> so we, we handle decimal numbers. Um, we, we strip out white space if it's a space or a carriage return. We this uh, this lexical analyzer is working on a buffer, uh, just a buffer of bytes, and if it's a um, it strips out carriage return and uh, it, it stays in a while loop and uh, looping through the uh, characters. If it gets a white space, it strips it out. Otherwise, it uh, converts zero to nine uh, to 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 a number. Or, or it returns, a, so it returns an, either a number, an operator, or a left or right parenthesis. And uh, the operators are mold, div, add, subtract. And uh, so the critical thing, so we, uh, we call get s to get a string, then we, uh, we parse it, then we unassemble, and then we call to get the result. So what did we have? One plus two times three times four. Um, oops, one plus two times three, uh, let's say times three, whatever. Uh, you see it prints the answer right there. So uh, what what this, uh, this calls the code after it makes it. So here's where it, uh, it parses and uh, so basically when you parse, either you, uh, when you get an operator, you either do it right away or you push it and do it later if it's a higher or lower precedence. <coughs> so uh, this encodes the precedence as a number. So the precedences are uh, the precedences are a term. That's the, that's either like a variable, an integer, or whatever. Then there's mole precedences. Then those are higher precedence than add. Uh, low. I don't know how you want to order it. You can either go up or down. Um, Anyway, uh, and then finally, a parenthesis is the um, the lowest precedence, um, highest number. So uh, we're going to look at uh, how my how my compiler works on this code. Uh, this code uh, is a for loop. It for loops to a hundred and uh, calls printf and prints the number. Uh, there's a there's an L trace which which will look at the result of the lexical analyzer. There's a, a C trace, which will just look at the uh, resulting. Uh, here's the. This is the code that we that this compiler makes. This is optimized. The the earlier one was not optimized. So XOR. So it's using RSI as a register variable. It's uh, it's checking at the top for less than 100. Uh, then it's uh, calling printf, incrementing, jumping. Anyway, so we're going to look at. Uh, um, the optimizer uh, starts with uh, a, a local variable is a negative off the base pointer. Uh, so the local variable i is uh, rbp plus minus 8, add the 2 and then 0, and then assign. So this pushes a 0 and then it assigns. That's how it does the uh, i equals 0. You see the i equals 0. That's the first thing it does is uh, it codes the address of i, then it codes the zero, then it does an assignment to that address. Um, then it does, a, it has a label because we want to come back to this spot. Then we uh, <coughs> we do, there's i again. This time we dereference i 
then we compare it to 100 right here. And if it's uh, less than, we want either a 0 or a 1 for true or false. Is it less than, true or false? If it's 0, if it's false, then we jump ahead to, to, to a label. Um, if it's if it's a, see if it's greater than if it's greater than 100 we're done so we jump ahead anyway otherwise we uh, do a call we from call start to call end is uh, this is one this is the printf that's implied um, there's I adds dereferences there's uh, one parameter going to printf this is a variable parameter count argument count um, there's one argument going to printf um, normal uh, then we push the address of the format string. This uh, is stored after this function. Uh, after the function code, we store the string for percent %d, and uh, then we call a function. Then we add uh, 18. There's three three items on the stack, and this is the end of the call. And it's uh, anyway. So uh, normally I use uh, the the um, version of return in functions that pops the stack. So normally you don't have popping the stack, but in this case we have a variable number on the stack. Anyway, so uh, uh, then uh, what do we do? We uh, we auto increment. This is a uh, post plus plus, post fix plus plus, uh, so uh, and then jump. So uh, there's a intermediate code. This is not assembly, it's intermediate code. My own uh, stack machine intermediate code. I don't use an AS, I don't use a symbol tree. I use a stack intermediate code. Uh, anyway, so after pass two, it's figured out the types. When you, uh, <coughs> when you, uh, do a compiler, you have to, uh, sometimes if you multiply by a float, you have to convert from float to int. So you got to figure out all the types. So, uh, my compiler, uh, starts with, uh, um, Lex, which uh, then it goes in, and uh, the the parser is what calls Lex, so it has to parse all the uh, the for statement, the while, and all that. Uh, anyway, and uh, it has to uh, uh, anyway. Uh, then it it handles expressions. It either uh, it either does the operator or does it later, and it has a little stack to keep track of which operator needs to be done. Um, so, uh, uh, anyway, so, uh, over here, then finally, finally it goes through these, uh, optimization passes, and, uh, we're going to look at those in a second. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, so, uh, the optimizations, uh, this one, but one, zero, one, and two have figured out, have simplified, uh, if you have integer constants, it replaces them. Uh, pass zero, one, and two. Uh, if you have, uh, let's say you have one plus two or something, then it uh, it simplifies it into three. Um, you don't, uh, and uh, it figures out the types. Uh, so uh, it builds up into. Uh, bigger and bigger instructions. Um, after pass three, we've, we have figured out the register variable RSI should be used for I. And uh, we're gonna, uh, that's the eight off the base pointer. Anyway, uh, so um, this is starting to combine them together into uh, arguments. Uh, so the argument for, uh, so it pops a stack, pops a stack, and then doesn't assign. By pass four, we've uh, switched over to register variables. Top of the stack is RAX. RSI is the variable I. Um, and starting to do calls and stuff. And pass five, it's getting bigger and bigger. Uh, and then finally, on the, the final passes, it's, it converts to assembly. And it calls it several times, seeing if it can uh, reduce uh, jumps. You see this jump is one byte. The first time we did this, we used a bigger byte, and then we saw we could use a smaller byte, so we used or a smaller size, so we used a smaller size. So it, it puts these in line and makes the final assembly code. Uh, so let's uh, let's look at that a little more closely. So uh, the lexical analyzer has uh, a get char uh, that uh, that uh, gets one character, feeds it to the lex. Uh, the lex function is where we uh, 
we let's see if we're lexing a string then we convert backslash n and etc um, if we're doing uh, if we're lexing uh, we convert integers to uh, we convert digits to, to numbers 0 to 9 if it's alphanumeric we convert that to an identifier and my lex uh, looks up in the symbol table for keywords and stuff in, or, or identifiers so uh, anyway uh, uh, now we uh, in my lex I handle uh, if def uh, pound define I handle that in my lexical analyzer my they call that preprocessor mine's actually part of my uh, it's not a separate pass it's part of my lex uh, anyway pound include is handled um, anyway uh, so when it does lex get char for uh, um, individual characters then it, uh, it if it runs out of characters it calls compiler prompt which is the command line mine does just in time or ahead of time if you're typing at the command line uh, then it uh, it uh, it prints the uh, prompt and then it uh, calls get get s to get from the command line so uh, um, I have uh, uh, keywords and stuff are loaded in when you start up the compiler uh, it loads in keywords into the symbol table uh, keyword if include define etc and it also loads in all opcodes opcodes have uh, different formats uh, so for example uh, ADC uh, there's a uh, add register memory uh, 8 16 bit 30 32 bit there's with an immediate or with another register anyway uh, so uh, let's look up uh, ROL um, my assembler uh, you have to specify if it's one argument or two arguments um, that's so that uh, in my assemb assembler uh, uh, we handle uh, uh, we we call lex when, when we're handling a block of assembly and it uh, if it's an identifier it, it makes a new label otherwise if it's an opcode it starts parsing the opcode uh, it's an identifier uh, now if, uh, let's see where's the opcode uh, if it's an opcode and it has one argument it parses an argument um, the key to lexing is you keep it one ahead uh, so it's always sitting one ahead token it's sitting on the next token when you call lex anyway if it has one argument it uh, it, call, it parses the argument if it has two it parses another argument the parse argument uh, for define, define byte this is for define byte uh, the assembler has to handle forward references and uh, undefined things that in C in C you don't have undefined things um, in assembler you have things that aren't defined yet anyway so uh, this hand, this parses an instruction um, it it tries the various formats to figure out which one is the shortest number of bytes so if it can use a, a eight eight bit immediate it uses that format uh, so uh, anyway uh, then it, here's where it parses the, the uh, when it stores a, if you have a number an expression uh, it might have uh, um, uh, um, undefined and it has to uh, resolve those anyway as it's here's where it makes a mask for the various argument types uh, to see uh, if it's a register memory immediate uh, register memory RAX um, it whittles down to figure out which uh, form of the instruction can be used if there's multiple forms it tries to see which one is the shortest uh, that's how it resolves the assembly uh, so parsing arguments it has to handle the scaling and R S I. anyway uh, so the unassembler uh, we have those opcodes the critical thing for doing an unassembler is you have to do a comparison they're multi bytes so you have to you have to put them in some kind of order um, based even, even if they're multi bytes um, once you have an order then all you have to do is a binary binary search and once you have a comparison um, so so you uh, you do a binary search to whittle down which instruction it is and then you uh, 
you you unassemble all the op the arguments. Uh, anyway, so uh, when when it starts up, it calls this, which uh, stores the precedence, makes a table of precedence, fill in tables. When you initialize the compiler, it initializes this. It has uh, it has strings for the, the various in, internal uh, intermediate codes. I don't use a symbol tree. I use my stack machine. This tells how many arguments on the stack, etc. Um, if it's a constant, then I have my error messages. I, I, I have exception handling, so I can call an exception and print out a message. Uh, anyway, so uh, it, it loads the symbol tables into the hash. It loads all the uh, keywords into the hash table. Um, this is where it initializes. It calls what we were just looking at. Load load the assembler opcode hash hash tables and keywords. Um, so. Uh, uh, sometimes let's see so we have either ahead of time or just in time for for inline assembly we have to handle that for ahead of time assembly this compile this is the this is for making a binary file um, you have to you have to uh, convert uh, to imports and exports you have to make a binary file with imports and exports uh, and you have to uh, save it as a binary uh, anyway I do just-in-time compiling anywhere I want with uh, pound DXE. Um, anyway, uh, so uh, we looked at Lex. Here's the expression evaluator. It basically uh, either does it, it uses a stack, and either does it uh, right now or does it later based on the precedence. Uh, statement parser. Um, this is where it goes through all the. Uh, all the statements, and uh, if we if we look at uh, do while, uh, we uh, we parse. Uh, let's see. We make a label because we want to loop back. Then we parse one expression, one statement that that's either with the block of uh, open print, open brace, end brace. Then we parse a keyword. We parse an expression for the do while. And uh, then we put the labels um, because we had to forward reference to if uh, to, to if the label was false, if the expression was false. Uh, so uh, now the uh, the code generation after it parses it it hands it off to be optimized and converted to machine code. So we handle the various opt optimization passes. There's zero one two zero one two. That's done three times. Part three, four, five, six, and then seven, eight, nine, ten is done uh, four times. Uh, it does a little bit more each time. Uh, anyway, so uh, so zero, one, two, it handles. Uh, it's got a big uh, case switch statement for all the intermediate codes. Uh, it converts uh, multiple. Uh, uh, it converts, simplifies integers, and it. Uh, Resolves types. That's what it does on this first pass. It also converts. Uh, if you have shift, it tries to use the shift operators instead of multiply and divide. Uh, pass three. This basically res this makes it figures out which variables should be registered variables, which which uh, offsets off of the base pointer should be registered variables. Um, sometimes you can't use a register variable because it's a, it's the address has been taken. You can't take the address of a register variable, so that it has to keep a count of how many references and, and dereferences, and that's how it tells if it can use a register variable. Oh, one more thing with the assembler, it has to handle expressions, and um, it it keeps a count of uh, of uh, of uh, um, how many um, addresses are in an expression if it's a if it's an even number of addresses, like if you take an address of a label minus another label, then it's uh, not a label and it doesn't need an, an absolute address correction. Now, if, so if you have a label minus a label, it's an integer. If you have a label, it has to have it's an absolute address and it needs to be patched. If it's a integer, it doesn't need to be patched. Um, anyway, so uh, I was just gonna uh, tell you that. Um, so. Uh, this pass three figures out register variables. Pass four, uh, I don't remember what it does. Basically, it starts combining them together into bigger and bigger instructions. 
oh, we have to convert from the stack machine to, to register variables too, and uh, we, we convert to how many parameters. There's up to three parameters for one code. Um, if you have move, if you have question mark, colon, operator, um, that takes three parameters. Um, so uh, in uh, 7, 8, and 9, we start calling to convert to assembly. We have a little buffer for each uh, stack, and we, we start making assembly code, and we either mark it, oh, we have to handle uh, type conversions um, going in or out of uh, the, uh, the intermediate code. And we convert, uh, we convert, uh, okay, so we convert to double or convert to int. And uh, then we're making assembly code here. This uh, ICU 16, that says, that, that says save 16 bytes of, 16 bits. Um, so that's, that's, that's assembly code. So this, uh, this final pass, 7, 8, 9, and 10, uh, calls, uh, calls this back, a lot of routines in this back end. This back end is where uh, we uh, do most of the conversion to assembly. Uh, so, for example, let's see what we got here. Memset. Those are inline functions, um, or modulo, min, max, limit. Those are inline functions. Let's see what we got got up here. Uh, and and branch. Uh, so basically, it uh, figures out. The uh, the arguments are either a register and immediate, or a uh, displacement off of a register, or uh, displacement with index. Uh, those are the um, so by the time we're done, it doesn't do the stack very much anymore. Um, anyway, so. Uh, I think that's so. It's either a register. The arguments are either a register, or a uh, st or stack, or displacement off a register, or or a RIP with the displacement, or SIB is that means an indexed. Uh, so it converts the parameters to each one of these intermediate codes to one of those, and then it. Uh, Anyway, so one of the critical things is uh, by the time it gets into a register, it's been converted to 64-bit. That's how my compiler works. Um, so uh, if it's in a register, it's been converted to 64 bits. When you load and store, that's when it handles uh, smaller sizes or bigger sizes. Anyway, so uh, uh, that's, that's what you need to know. Um, so uh, yeah, that's my assembler, unassembler, compiler. Um, hope you enjoyed it.